Hey everybody, it's Mike coming to you from Vaught RV here in Fort Worth. Hey, today let's talk about J-Feather Micros. How micro is it? About 4,000 pounds, less than 20 feet long. If you're looking for a lightweight unit that's easy to tow, easy to pull, easy to park, this might be the ticket for something to get out and enjoy Mother Nature and stay off grid a little bit. All of the micros are designed with that in mind to make it a little easier to spend more time off grid if you so choose. Again, 20 foot long package, but it's really comfortable. Now you can get these in bunk versions and you can also get them in what I call couples camper versions, which is this, it's a 166 FBS. So let's walk around on the outside and then we'll go on the inside. Of course, we're on a fiberglass exterior. Now when you're in a package this small, you're not gonna get a ton of storage. So uh, you kind of can't expect a ton of storage in a 20 foot long unit, and yet Jayco does utilize every little bit of available storage. We have a, a griddle right here. So this unit comes with a capital grill griddle that fits on the outside here, our detachable power cord. And if you can see, this uh, story, pass-through storage goes all the way through to the other side. I do have a light up here and access to current. So I can plug in some, uh, some uh, you say you have a golf cart or something else you need to charge, or you want to have lights plugged in here, I've got power right in here to do that. Now these, I call these Nerf bars, they're brush guards, it's not a step as the sticker says. But what this does is help protect the sides of the unit. If you're dragging this through some scrub oak in Colorado or something, keeps that stuff from dragging along the side of the unit and scratching up the side. Nerf bars, brush guards, whatever you want to call them. Now the micros have two propane bottles up front and an electric tongue jack. So this makes leveling and hooking and unhooking a breeze because of the electric tongue jack. If there's, for some reason this were to fail, you can pop this grommet out and crank it up and down manually. So you can always do that. I've got lights up here, these little LED lights, as well as up top, and there's a switch inside that you can control those. Battery tray right behind here. So, uh, a lot of the appliances uh, in this, including the refrigerator and the TV and the entertainment center are all 12 volt. They're drawing power from the batteries on here and that's important to keep your batteries healthy. This also has a solar panel up on top. So we have solar power as well as an option to keep everything happy and healthy on here for your power needs. Now we're on the other side of our pass-through storage. We have magnet catches, so that stays up just like that. Again, goes all the way through to the other side for storage, you know, bag chairs, fishing poles, long items like that. We have a six gallon direct spark ignition water heater right here. So this runs off either electricity or liquid propane. Low point drain as labeled. Now this has one slide, but it's a really shallow slide. It's only about 12, 14 inches deep. But when it's opened up, which we'll see in a second, it really gives you a little more elbow room on the inside of the coach. Now, because we're in a J Feather Micro, we're seven and a half feet wide with a wider stance on the wheels and Wrangler off-road Goodyear tires. So these are larger lug tires, more capable of off-road. Notice we're lifted too. We're four inches higher than a traditional uh, SLX, which is sitting right behind me. So if you look at that one, and then you look at this, we've got more clearance. So if you're, again, going off-road, you got some rocks that you're trying to dodge, tree stumps or whatever, you're gonna be in better shape with this. Of course, we have our black and gray pull valves for our holding tank here. Stabilizing jacks on four corners, so once you get it leveled and un unhooked from your truck, drop your stabilizing jacks down. It's a three quarter inch driver. It's the last thing you're gonna do once you get it leveled, drop those jacks down to stabilize the coat. Now we have an outdoor shower. It's both hot and cold. We have our main city water connection and a tank flush valve above. So one of my tips, a best practice, when you open up these valves after a trip, go ahead and hook up a separate hose to this, turn it on and let it run and let it wash out and rinse out the, the uh, black tank, helps keep it clean. A detachable power cord here. 
if you're at a campground or a resort that has cable TV provided, and many of them do now, hook it up right here. Now you have cable both on the inside and on the patio side. Full-size spare tire. This is a Goodyear American made with a six-year warranty tire. This is great. This ladder has two pins that pop out, lift it up, you can pull it around and hook it into that rail up on top. So if you wanna be storing some stuff uh, up on top, you can move this around and have better access to put, um, you know, maybe a kayak or something like that. Otherwise, you can just scurry up like this. Easy to get up here. I have my 190 watt solar panel up there that I can check on. And again, this removes easily. It's, it's nicely placed so that if you put a rear view camera right up there, the camera goes right between these two uh, rungs of the ladder. So you have a clear view of behind the coach. It's already prepped for camera, easy to add if you want to. I have light switch right here for underneath the steps. And again, these brush carts continue around to this side. You can see I have the LED light strip uh, turned on and it's a power awning. So it's controlled from switch inside, exterior speakers. If you want to put a television outside, right here's where it would go. And then I have electrical power and coax here uh, to hook up to the TV on the outside. Safety marker lights right here, which is really nice. So Jayco's always been safety minded with their J-Smart lighting protocol. When you hit your right turn signal, the back uh, light's gonna light, this will, that front one will there as well. So if somebody's pulling up beside you, they're gonna know your intentions and know that you're about to turn. The, uh, the, the capital grill griddle would fit right in here. The platform just slides right into this receiver. And then we have a propane quick connect right under here. So I have a cooking assembly that would rest right here underneath my awning, the fun side of the camper, as I like to say. And then we have a little drink refrigerator. This is running off 110 household current. Now, if you don't want this in here and you would rather have this as storage, Super easy. Unscrew, unscrew, lift it out, take it in your garage at home, and now you have a drink refrigerator at home. Or you can have it in here, but it's a nice little space to use either way. I just love these magnet catches. Great. Okay, now, neat, small, little unit. Let's go inside and have a look. We've got this with Moride Step Above Steps. I don't always talk about the screens. A lot of people actually ask me, do these actually have screen doors? Yes, it does. It's a separate screen door assembly. Put it on there and it travels in and out with the door or separately like this. We call this the margarita pass-through door. All right. So I'll put that back there. When it's time for travel, simply lift up on the Moride step. That's the travel position. Each one of these legs is adjustable. So if you're on uneven ground in the Rocky Mountains, adjust these legs so they make good firm contact to the ground and you're in good shape. Close the door, pop that in, and you're ready for travel. Let's go inside and have a look. Okay, now we're inside of this 166 FBS. It's a J Feather Micro. This is a couple's camper. So I have a queen bed up here and a jackknife sofa here that will drop down in case you have guests or in case one of you gets kicked out of bed at night, right? So we have what I call it east-west bed orientation up here. This is a pretty substantial foam mattress. There's no storage under here. However, underneath here we do have two uh, ottomans basically that you can pull out and there's storage underneath each one of them. So you can pull these out and use them for a foot rest if you need to right across from the TV. This is a couple's camper. It's made for a couple people or maybe a single person. So I have storage in here, storage in there, and uh, you can clip them closed, but I'll just push them under there for the display right now. Now, I have a power source right here. Turn this light on. Household current as well as USB here. Now, I'm six feet tall. So I have plenty of room on this. If I have a pillow up here, I'm saying if you're 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you can still stretch out amply underneath here. 
Now, um, again, I mentioned this is a jackknife, so I have these uh, sort of TV tray inserts that just drop into the cup holders. If you take them out like that, just lift up on the front of this, and now I have a bed here. You'll notice what we find behind here. It's a table. This is a great place to store it. It's just a simple folding table plastic, so I can take that out on the patio and have some prep area outside. It's nice to have that table along. Pop this up just like that. Pop these guys right back in place, and we're good to go. Now, I also have USB ports right here next to the sofa as well as household current. I didn't do a good job turning all these lights on, Brian. Smoke glass inserts in the cabinetry above the sofa. So again, we're in a micro, not a huge trailer, but Jacob is using every amount of space available for storage. Now again, we have solar above, so that's important uh, for a couple reasons. This television runs off 12 volts, runs off your batteries. The refrigerator runs off 12 volts. All of these lights run off 12 volts and the slide mechanism is 12 volts. So if you're off grid, meaning you have no source of shore power, electrical power, you can still use most of the functions here on this trailer with just battery power. That solar panel up on top is gonna send a trickle charge to your batteries. Now, a lot of folks will ask me, what does solar power? The correct answer is really nothing. The solar is charging your batteries and your batteries in turn are charging uh, or providing power to your 12 volt systems. Now, with one 190 watt panel, can you go indefinitely without any power? No, probably not. But it's gonna extend the amount of time you can go without needing another source of power. One thing that folks forget about if you are anemic on power, it's a cloudy day, your batteries are discharging, back your truck or SUV up, plug it up and let it idle. It's gonna charge the batteries on here and that's another source of power. And of course, there's another way, get a generator. You have a generator on this unit and you'll uh, have the best of all, of all worlds. Again, this is both a radio as well as a television. If I release this right here, I can open it up to reveal storage behind the TV. So that's neat that we're not losing storage behind the TV. And then I've got two drawers underneath the TV um, for clothes or what have you. Now in the galley area, I have a, a small microwave right here. So this is also a convection. So I don't have a traditional oven in here, so it's a convection microwave. So any kind of baking you're going to do is gonna happen right here. Uh, we're in a J-Feather Micro, and this is a micro-sized sized, uh, convection uh, microwave. Now I have both a light and a fan, which is vented to the outside, so you can keep those smells and the heat outside of the coach. This is a three-burner propane cooktop. Fold this back to become your backsplash. This lifts out for easy cleaning, and then your backlit controls here as well for your three burner cooktop. Two drawers for storage underneath. I always like to brag about Jayco's cabinet build because it's always going to be solid maple uh, faces to the drawers as well as cabinets. They're gonna be glued and screwed together and they're gonna have ball bearing uh, full extension drawer glides. Really important because you think this thing's going down the road, it's getting beat up here, getting bounced around. You don't want these things falling apart. We've got some storage underneath our sink here, as well as this drawer. Have an outlet right here as well, so it's handy up, to, up top here if you want to put a, a, uh, a griddle or a coffee maker or something like that. And then again, I have storage with a smoked glass insert right above the countertop. Now this looks like a solid surface countertop. Uh, it's not, it's a poly material, but I like it because it allows Jayco to do an undermount residential style sink. So if you've got uh, some food prep mess that you've done up here, it makes it easy to clean this off and wipe off your countertop. And also the first time that I saw this, I thought that was real tile. It looks very convincing. It's actually smooth. 
It's a backsplash, uh, but it looks like real tile. It looks 3D even though it's not. So circling around, we'll take a peek inside the bathroom here. This is a shower enclosure um, and with a traditional shower curtain, we're, we're utilizing space to the best of our ability, or I should say Jayco is. This is a traditional shower curtain. I'm actually a fan of these, so if these things get dirty, take it off, you can wash it, hang it right back up. I'm six feet tall, average build, so there's enough room, not a ton of room, but enough room in a 20 foot unit to come in here and take a shower in the comfort of my own RV. I have a little medicine cabinet right here. It's nice to have that. And then we have a sink right here. Foot flush toilet, which is a plastic toilet. And Jayco thinks of everything every time. Underneath the sink, I have a little bit of a storage area as well and an outlet right here, which is GFI protected. Little quick tip, if you're having problems and some outlets aren't working, besides checking the breakers, check your GFIs. If one of them's popped, nothing downstream from that is going to be powered. So check your breakers and fuses and check your GFIs to see if they're popped. You might solve your problem without having to call a technician. Now, this is the only unit that you get a branded bottle opener. If you buy a Jayco, you get a branded Jayco bottle opener. What more reason would you need to buy this? I don't know. Right there. That's pretty special. Now, right behind here, we have our 12 volt refrigerator. So here's your release. Just push down. And that's important so that this, this thing doesn't open during travel. It's locked. So push that down to release it. Same way on this side, push up to release the freezer compartment. That's pretty cool because this is uh, considerably larger than a traditional gas electric refrigerator. I had a couple call me the other day. They had a gas electric fridge and they said, hey, this thing's not getting cold. And I asked them how long it had been turned on and they said a couple hours. The fact is with a traditional gas electric RV fridge, you really need to turn it on the night before to get it down to temperature. These 12 volt fridges are compressor fridges. You turn this on and within a couple hours, you can be freezing ice cubes and putting ice cream in here. They work much like a residential refrigerator. And then there's a little bit of storage to the left of the fridge, both top and bottom. That's our furnace assembly right here. So here's where your heat's gonna be coming from. Of course, uh, supplied by propane. And then right here I have both our breakers and our 12 volt fuses and they're all labeled here so you know what you're looking for. Now again we're in the Jayfeather Micro 166. This is a couples camper. I love it a lot because you can stay comfortable with this a pretty shallow slide, it gives you a lot more elbow room. So in here, I've got two people walking around. We don't feel like we're on top of each other. There's enough room, but this thing is easy to tow, easy to park. If you're wanting to go visit all the national parks and state parks and go to National Forest Service land, where sometimes the campsites and areas to camp are pretty small, you have no worries with this. There's not a hard and fast rule in terms of how long your RV can be. It depends on the geography of the, uh, the land that you're going to or the national park you're going to. But at 20 feet long, I gotta think there's very few places on planet Earth that you can't take this and enjoy it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Speaking of enjoying it, my name is Mike here at Vaud RV. If you get a chance and you feel like it and wanna click like and subscribe below, we would appreciate it. We work really hard to bring these videos to you. We're not perfect, but we try to be. And if there's a video that you'd like us to do on a unit we haven't done yet, just drop a comment below and we'll do our best to get to it. Give us a call. We'll get you hooked up with one of our great sales guys. And remember, we think that shopping for an RV should be just as fun as using them. So come on out. Let's have some fun looking at RVs. See you next time. Howdy everybody, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a thing or two from what I had to say. If you did and feel like it, then click subscribe below. And when I post a video, you'll be the first to know. See you next time.